Well, good evening. I am uh, really honored to be part of this first TEDx Tucson event. And as they were prepping me for this event, they said, uh, you know, you need to think about being provocative, being controversial, being cool, being hip. And I said, well, how are you hip? And they said, well, dress in black. And I looked around my closet and I thought, I live in the Southwest, I don't dress in black. And the only thing I could find was my Oakland Raiders t-shirt. And I knew my daughters would tell me that enlightened people don't wear Oakland Raiders t-shirts, and certainly not at an event like this. So what you're getting is my tasseled shoes, my blue blazer, and my open shirt. And I may not be a hipster, but I am an authentic, middle class, 60 year old baby boomer, and I'm here to talk to you about something that I think is pretty cool and hip. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna to talk to you about our efforts to develop the solar zone at the U of A Tech Park. Now, some of you may know about the Tech Park, but about 16 years ago, the university acquired from IBM about 1,300 acres of land and some remarkable facilities out at Ina Road, or uh, I-10 and Rita Road. Uh, and at the tech park today, there are 50 high technology companies advancing new technology. They employ 7,000 employees, and those employees make about twice the Pima County average wage. And the annual economic impact of the tech park is about $3 billion to the local economy. So several years ago, we started thinking about how could the tech park advance this whole new notion of sustainable development renewable energy, and solar energy. And we came up with the concept of developing a world-class center for solar energy development and deployment. And we're working now to make that concept a reality. And I'd like to share with you some of the thoughts that we have and the direction that we're taking. But going back to what George had talked about, I think it's necessary to put this in perspective. You know, my life has been in economic development, so I'm not only, not only concerned about a sustainable environment, but I'm concerned about a sustainable economy. And we are going through a fundamental change in the world economy right now. As a baby boomer, I saw that change after World War II and how we advanced the U.S. economy through the past 30 or 40 years. But there are some fundamental changes happening in the stru structure and the dynamics of the world economy. And the question for Tucson is, how do we respond to those, and how do we put ourselves at the front of it? And not to dwell too much, but first of all, we're seeing a change in the powers that drive the world economy. It used to be Japan, Europe, and the United States, and now we're seeing the emergence of economies like China and India and Brazil. Um, pardon the expression, but much of the late 20th, uh, 20th century economy was driven or lubricated by the abundance of cheap Middle East oil uh, at a very low cost, and we know that we're depleting those resources, that those supplies are dwindling, and the cost is gonna go up. We also know that a great part of what's happening in the world economy today is technology is driving, or is the engine, or the spark that drives the economic engine, and so we need to be at the forefront of technological advances. There's huge competition in the world, fierce competition. Competition for capital, for labor, for technology, for a whole bunch of things. And if we're gonna be competitive, we've gotta be at that leading edge of these kinds of things. And finally, what we're seeing is the most competitive nations, the most competitive regions, are really embracing the concept of sustainable economies and sustainable environments. So how does the solar zone fit into that? Well, I think, and my colleagues at the University of Arizona, and you've heard some very talented presentations from some of them today, think that we can use the sun to put Tucson in a competitive position economically and environmentally. You've already heard about the abundance of sun we have and the incredible geographical location advantages that we have with solar radiation. We have a world-class university and that university has some very deep strengths in the disciplines and the fields that can drive solar energy development. Everything from the Roger Angel, who is developing this new way of harnessing the sun power, to uh, Joe Simmons, who is looking at new ways to store energy that's produced by solar generation, uh, to people over in our atmospheric sciences department who are trying to figure out how we maximize uh, these solar panels in times of cloud cover and at night. So leveraging the university is a key part of this. 
And the third part of it is committed leadership. Now, I know it'll be astounding to some of you that we have enlightened leadership in Tucson, but we really do. <laughs> and I'm going to give you three examples. The first one is Robert Shelton, the president of the University of Arizona. He, as a physicist, understands the power and the potential of solar energy and renewable energy, and he has committed the University of Arizona to be at the leading edge of this technology, to embed it in our research activities, to embed it in our educational programs, and actually to have the university walk the talk by deploying solar energy in a variety of ways around campus. Some of you may have seen, for instance, the new solar panels on the top of the Second Street garage or know about the solar energy that's now being used to heat the swimming pool at the rec center. We're going to be doing a lot more of that at the university. The second leader that I would point to is Paul Bonavia, the new head of Unisource Tucson Electric Power. He's leading a relatively small public utility, but he's made a commitment to have TEP be a leader in solar energy uh, deployment. And the extraordinary part is two years ago, we were generating less than two megawatts of power through the public utility activities. At the end of this year, Tucson will be generating almost 170 megawatts of power using solar, a very remarkable accomplishment in a short period of time. And finally, <laughs> finally, TRIO, our local economic development organization, has embraced the concept of using solar energy and the solar technology to drive a new industry base, to build an industry base around solar energy. And so they're out in the world trying to attract solar energy companies that can come to Tucson and help us build that industry base. So let me talk a little bit about what we're trying to do with our solar zone at the Science and Tech Park. Um, we are trying to create this world-class facility and we've set aside 220 acres of land and we're in a partnership with Tucson Electric Power to build the largest multi-technology solar demonstration location in the United States. We've entered into partnership with six companies that will come to the park and demonstrate five different kinds of technology. Two of those projects are already underway, and at the end of this next coming year, 2011, all six of those projects will be up and will be demonstrating and testing new technology. And the interesting part of it is the tech park, which is a huge user of electricity, will become a positive power producer. We currently use about 14 megawatts of power at peak, will be generating 20 megawatts of power and feeding that into the grid. But more importantly, more importantly is to use the park to then, and this demonstration site, to leverage Tucson into a competitive, world-class position in solar energy development. So what are we trying to do? We have a comprehensive strategy for doing this using the solar de demonstration and generation platform to then reach out and do research and development and help test the kinds of technology that are being developed at the University of Arizona, spinning those technologies into new companies that can be new startups and be job creators in our community, attracting companies from around the world, uh, from places like Spain and Israel and Germany that have been taking the lead in that, and opening the, this site up as a place for them to enter the U.S. market. And if you have a world-class industry, you need a world-class workforce. So we're working with Pima Community College, the university, and the Vail School District to create the curriculum and the educational programs that can train the solar techs, the solar engineers, the people that service the industry. And finally, and I think perhaps most importantly, we want to create a public awareness center where the public can learn about solar energy, where they can find out how they can adapt it and use it in their everyday lives. That's really the key to making solar energy work. So let me just give you a couple of illustrations of this. Uh, this is a very large project. Uh, the area is almost as big as the entire main campus of the University of Arizona for the solar demonstration site. Um, this shows uh, an area where we have already done one demonstration project. We built a brand new high school for the Vail Academy and a high school. And that is a LEED Platinum certified facility in which 30% of its power is being generated by solar and wind power. We're creating a solar node along a new parkway that we're creating with Pima County in the city of Tucson along the northern edge of the park. And one of the features of that is going to be this interactive node where people who are biking, hiking, jogging can stop and look into the solar zone and see what's going on and learn about solar energy. But to even expand beyond that is the opportunity to take solar energy and create another opportunity for us, which is ecotourism. 
And so we're going to be creating a solar demonstration center and a solar garden where people can interface and interact with solar energy technology and learn all about it. We think this could be the equivalent of the Desert Museum for the solar field and draw people from all over the world to Tucson to see this. So what does this do for us? Well, first of all, it takes advantage of Tucson's competitive advantages with the sun, the university, and leadership. It can help us create a sustainable environment and economy. We can build a high-wage community and provide great jobs for our children and our grandchildren, and we can improve the quality of life for all the citizens. So what do I need from you? What I need is your commitment. And the first thing is, if we're going to be truly a solar community, we need to know what it takes to support the solar industry. We need tax accountants and lawyers. We need real estate agents, all who know how to support this industry. But most importantly, we need to adopt solar energy as part of our lifestyle, to embed it in our homes, in our businesses. And if we do that, Tucson can be at the front of the 21st century and leading a new kind of economy built around solar energy. Thank you. <laughs>